to improve farmers' uptake and agricultural yields. In the current long rain season, the government has launched the enhanced e-voucher fertilizer subsidy program through which it has availed 6 million 50 kilogram bags of subsidized fertilizer worth Kenya shillings 15 billion, retailing at a cost of Kenya shillings 3,500 per bag, down from the market price of 6,500 per bag, representing a subsidy of Kenya shillings 3,000 per bag for fertilizer. To date, Mr. Speaker, 2,246,000 uh, e vouchers have been issued to registered farmers. As at 22nd April 2023, 28 counties were participating in the maize and coffee value chains. The total digitally registered farmers in these counties was 2 million. 332 farmers. In these counties, 1,960,000 50 kilogram bags of fertilizers have been bought, and by a total of 271,684 farmers. Subsidized fertilizer for tea and coffee farmers has also been organized under the same program. And Mr. Speaker, again, I'll table uh, some data or statistics on how this fertilizer has been distributed across the countries, the counties, sorry. Mr. Speaker, another intervention from the government is the provision of duty waivers on food imports to bridge the food stocks, deficit, and stabilize the high food commodity prices, the government has granted duty waiver for importation of 1.4 million, largely to be uh, used for production of animal feed, 200,000 metric tons of soya beans, 300 metric tons of soya bean meal, 1,600 metric tons of assorted protein concentrate and 40,000 metric tons of feed additives effective from 1st February to 6th of August 2023. Mr. Speaker, you will note that this program is being put in place to end before the Kenyan, harvest, Kenyan farmers harvest season begins. Mr. Speaker, the duty in the short term. However, the cost of food will be dictated by supply and demand, which is the key focus of the Kenya Kwanzaa programs, because it is estimated that Kenyan farmers lose about 30% of their crop in ensuring that we also deal with enhanced pest control uh, and aflatoxin. We also intend to promote drought-tolerant crops. Uh, Mr. Speaker, in the current year, over 250 metric tons of assorted drought-tolerant seeds valued at Kenya shillings 50 million have been distributed in Embu, Meru, Makueni, Machakos, Taraka Nithi, Moranga, Nyeri, Siaya, and Busia counties. These being basic seeds, it is expected that farmers will multiply and redistribute the seeds in their localities, that, uh, thus addressing the challenge of seed access and food insecurity. Mr. Speaker, we also have quite a number of other government programs in collaboration with the county governments these are programs that support crop and livestock insurance, the National Value Chain Support Program, Small Scale Irrigation Pro Support Programs, just to name a few, that are designed to help the farmers. Mr. Speaker, now let me come to the aspect of reducing 
the comment has lifted the moratorium on power purchase agreements as a way of enhancing the country's energy security by opening up the energy sector to continued investments and leveraging on the market forces of demand and supply. However, the price benefits will not be immediate due to other exogenous factors. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, prior to April 2023, the government imported all its petroleum product requirements. The monthly requirement is approximately 740,000 metric tons of fuel. That is monthly. And this translates to, in monetary terms, it translates to about 70 million US dollars per month. All these petroleum products imports were paid for in US dollars, which put a strain on the government's forex reserves and caused a huge deficiency in, availab in availability of US dollars, causing depreciation of the Kenya shilling. The US dollar requirements by oil marketing companies account for about 30% of Kenya's total US dollar requirements. And I want to repeat that. The US dollar requirements by oil marketing companies accounts for about 30% of Kenya's total US dollar requirements, putting local foreign exchange reserves under pressure. In an effort to ease the aforementioned pressure, the government therefore entered into a memorandum of understanding of petroleum products for a term of 270 days on extended credit for a period of 180 days. This arrangement is referred to as the government-to-government -government arrangement, G-to-G -G arrangement. Under the foregoing terms, Mr. Speaker, the G2G arrangement is under implementation and the first cargoes, I'm emphasizing this, the first cargoes, that is MT Front Capella, delivering 80,000 metric tons of Jet A1 fuel, and MT Nord Top Dolphin, delivering 85,000 metric tons of petrol were received at the port of Mombasa respective, uh, respectively on Thursday 13th of April 2023. Other cargoes have been scheduled and are expected in the country. The first consignment having been received, the positive effects of this uh, arrangement should start the eventual on exchange and cost petroleum. Cost of cooking gas. We have moved swift, swiftly and in and supply we resulted in price inflation. The government has opened up this sector by reviewing the policy to allow for competition by setting stage for additional players to be licensed to set up liquefied petroleum gas, that is LPG facilities. This will cut the cost of handling and evacuating gas from the ships to the mainland, hence allowing the dealers to transfer the cost reliefs to the consumer. Mr. Speaker, now let me touch on how we are addressing the depreciation of the Kenya shilling against other currencies currencies. Government 
is implementing sound exchange rate policies to stabilize the local currency and manage exchange reserves in an effort to mitigate the impact of fluctuations. As I noted earlier in my statement, in response to the question, the official foreign exchange reserves have declined from 7.9 million US dollars, which is equivalent to four months of import cover, as at December 2022, to 7.1 million US dollars, which is equivalent to four months of import cover as at February this year. The usable foreign exchange reserves have remained adequate at 6,531 million that US dollars, that is 3.6 months of import cover as at April 19th. This, Mr. Speaker, meets the Central Bank of Kenya statutory requirement to endeavor to maintain at least four months of import cover. The G2G arrangement for the importation of petroleum products that accounts for up to 30% of Kenya's USD requirements is expected to not only stabilize the exchange rate, but also to lead to the appreciation of the Kenya shilling. Mr. Speaker, let me now highlight some of the immediate steps that the government is taking to stabilize the economy and set the country on a growth trajectory. These are several, but I'll just try and pick out a few. Mr. Speaker, as the House will appreciate, measures to cushion Kenyans from the high cost of living, as well as reduce the cost of basic commodities, as I have, as I have enumerated above, will invariably also result in a stabilized economy. I will therefore take this opportunity to highlight other measures aimed at stabilizing the economy. First, the government is committed to programs jointly formulated with its development partners, through which we anticipate to get much needed budget support. When the Cabinet Secretary for Treasury will be speaking to Parliament in a few weeks time, uh, he will elaborate on this. We will continue bolstering economic resilience by pursuing prudent macroeconomic policies geared at reducing debt vulnerabilities and supporting sustainable and inclusive development. Mr. Speaker, through physical, the, the, the fiscal consolidation program, we aim to continue with our revenue mobilization and expenditure prioritization policies geared towards economic recovery. This will support sustained, rapid, and inclusive economic growth and safeguard livelihoods that's creating a physical space for the implementation of government priority programs. With inflation remaining above the target band, our monetary policy will remain focused on maintaining price stability by resisting the pass-through of second round effects from higher food and fuel prices to other prices and keeping inflationary pressures well anchored. Over the medium term, inflation is expected to return to the midpoint of 5% of our target band. Our target band is 25 to 7.5%. The Central Bank on its part has proactively tightened its monetary policy stands to prevent second round effects and keep inflation expectations anchored. The CBK rate was raised to 9.5% in March 2023. This is expected to gradually reduce inflation in the coming months. 
The exchange rate flexibility has worked as a shock absorber in the face of a variety of external shocks and will continue to do so to help support our competitiveness, protect reserves, and facilitate efficient functioning of our domestic foreign exchange market. Mr. Speaker, these policies are mutually reinforcing in support of maintaining macroeconomic stability and resilience, ensuring physical and debt sustainability, and enhancing buffers against external shocks. The government will implement the bottom-up economic transformation agenda that is geared towards economic turnaround and inclusive growth as specified in the budget policy statement, which I am happy to note this House has already approved. Finally, it is important to take cognizance of the functioning of markets, especially on the supply side where there are threats to market like political unrest, strikes, and mandamano. The functionality of the markets is, is impaired, thus slowing down economic recovery. Mr. Speaker, I pause there so that uh, I can take up some supplementary questions. Thank you, Prime Cabinet Secretary. Before I call on Yusuf to fire his first supplementary, allow me, Honorable Members, to acknowledge in the speaker's gallery, Mandera County Assembly officers of the Assembly from Mandera East. You may stand to be acknowledged. Thank you. On my behalf and on behalf of Parliament as a whole, we welcome you. In the public gallery, I acknowledge the presence of the following institutions, Africa Youth Leadership Forum from Dagoretti North, Nairobi, Pendo Youth Group from Kon Konoin in Bomet, Kwanjenga Primary School from Mbakasi South, Nairobi, and the Goshen Academy from Kuria West in Migori. Again, on my behalf and your behalf, honorable members, we welcome the four institutions to the House of Parliament. Honorable Hassan, you may ask your supplementary question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I uh, uh, would like on the onset to say that uh, um, while um, the Prime Cabinet Secretary has outlined the long-term measures that the government uh, is hoping to benefit from, uh, and uh, jumpstart our economy, I have not really uh, had uh, adequate steps that the government would take to unrest the cost of living in the, in the short term and in the medium term. It is good to provide fertilizers to our farmers, but 30% of our population lives, live in urban centers where they are suffering uh, from the high cost of living. And uh, apart from the wish list, that perhaps with the bumper harvest, with the stabilization of the global economy, it appears as if the government uh, is entirely leaving the Kenyan uh, public uh, to the vulgars uh, of the economy uh, and supply and demand issues. Uh, the second point I also wanted to uh, speak about is since the Prime Cabinet Minister has highlighted the runaway debt crisis in the country, uh, our escalating national debt is like an albatross, which if not handled with care and seriousness, the seriousness it demands could choke the life out of our national economy and undermine our national development. I already hear from economists that in fact our national debt is already above the 10 trillion. Uh, so what concrete action is the government uh, doing or taking to ensure that in fact our debt does not escalate beyond uh, a, a situation where we are no longer able uh, to, to service it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Yusuf. Uh, Cabinet Secretary, you will take several, okay. and then you can answer them together. 
Geoffrey Ruku. I hope you have uh, keyed in for this. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Had you uh, intervened for asking a supplementary? Or it was for something totally different? Uh, totally different. Yes. Okay. That's the problem I have with this screen. Uh, Major Dong. Is there? Give him the. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to ask uh, Prime Cabinet Secretary a uh, supplementary question. Could the Prime Cabinet Secretary confirm whether the subsidy fertilizer, fertilizer that the government uh, that the government supplied is going to be a continuous process? Um, Yes, whether it is going to be a continuous process and for how long. The second one, wow. on the same, on the same, on the same. Uh, could the cabinet, could the Prime Cabinet Secretary indicate whether the budgetary allocation on the same uh, for the subsidy fertilizer will be included in the national budget estimates expected this week in this parliament? Thank you. Mawade of Embakasi South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the Prime Cabinet Secretary, just wanted to ask, uh, you've given a very long uh, feedback or answer on uh, on the positives, uh, a very specific question. The local or the common Monainchi wants to know when the cost of commodities, and especially the consumables, like unga and the cooking oil will be lowered. That way they become affordable, especially for people like from Mokuru, Kwanjenga, Kwaruben, and the lower income sections. Thank you. Majority Thank you, Leader. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, from what I've heard from the Prime Cabinet Secretary, there are a number of measures that uh, government has already taken and I appreciate the fact uh, of what you have said on the uh, production of maize that we had the lowest production of maize in the last 10 years and uh, he has stipulated various measures including the um, subsidy to uh, rather subsidy production subsidy in uh, fertilizer subsidy rather than consumption subsidy so my question is one whether government is considering because we have had calls for reintroduction of the consumer subsidies in maize whether government is considering any consumption subsidies especially the maize subsidy uh, that was there before the election and two i have also seen farmers in the north rift raise issues on whether they were getting subsidized fertilizer for top dressing fertilizer i want to hear from the cabinet secretary whether government is indeed considering to give farmers uh, the top dressing uh, uh, subsidized fertilizer. Member for cases. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I want, first of all, to appreciate uh, Leader Majority for bringing out a serious issue in the entire North Rift. Transport, uh, Mr. Speaker, forms a key driver in matters of economic transformation. We are experiencing a serious challenges along the Northern Corridor, especially within Kese's region. Several non-tariff barriers have been mounted by police, starting from Timboroa. We have one at Napkoi Junction. We have one at uh, Kondo, Ban Forest Tarakwa polling station. We have one in uh, Bayete Center. The was is in Jeptire police station at the junction. We have one in uh, another one around Eldoret Junction to the Holy Nairobi Road. I want to know why all these non tariff barriers. This is a corridor that enables transport uh, crisscrossing uh, the landlocked countries and even interfering with the transport around the region, especially this is a gradual center with tariffs, toll stations that are not registered. We don't know the collection being done by the same officers where it is going. 
I want to know what are the plans by the government to ensure we his transport and support uh, business and support communication between the, the countries around the EAC. Thank you. Thank you. A member for Daoud, is that you? Daoud from Wajia. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Prime Cabinet Secretary. My question is that okay. I've heard a lot of things that the <laughs> Prime Cabinet Secretary has said okay. regarding yes. production subsidy. Mr. Prime Cabinet Secretary, what plans do you have for production subsidy for the livestock sector? I've heard of fertilizer, tea, coffee. Are we still going back to the sessional paper number 10 of 1965 and forgetting the rest of Kenya? Secondly, only one. Thank you. You are done. Come, Kate, since you are chairing, it means your question is asked. Uh, Pukose. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank the Prime Cabinet. My question is, uh, you've given the measures about uh, what the government is planning. When do we expect the economy to improve? Thank you. Prime, those are six. I'll take two more. Indikiri. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Could the Prime uh, Cabinet Secretary uh, tell us why the government has not considered uh, supplying seeds to the farmers together with fertilizer? Mr. Speaker, I think that's very important. Supply the fertilizer, but we don't supply the seeds, knowing that the farmers have gone for a long time without lanes, and therefore they didn't have uh, the seeds that they can use for fertilizer. Thank you. Women rep Kwale. Is that Mombasa or Kwale? Mombasa. You know, you look alike with your colleague from Kwale. Asante sana, Bona Speaker. Salilangu Lenda Kwa Waziri Mku. Na Penda Kujua. Kule Dongo Kundu, Special Economic Zone. Metumia Mbinugani Kufidia. Wale Walo Pokonyo Mashambaya Pale Ilu Kufanya Womra. Kwa sababu kuna tetesi kuwa, kuna yule ambaye pengina alikuwa na ikari saba makumi, amepewa only 50 by 100. Natamani sana kujua, sante sana. Last this round, Irene Mayaka. Members, be patient, I'll give you enough time to ask questions. So um, there will be another round. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, speaker, I'd like to ask uh, a follow-up question on... Uh, what the cabinet secretary had talked about the war in Ukraine being one of the issues uh, that are causing our economic issues. And my question is particularly on the import of wheat because wheat is one of the things that we import most uh, from, from Ukraine. And seeing that there's still no solution to the conflict, what are the auxiliary measures that the government is putting in place to make sure that they cushion Monainchi? Because as we all know, Wheat is one of those products that we get a lot of food stuff from. Thank you. Thank you. Prime Cabinet Secretary, those are nine supplementaries. You may answer. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, we we'll come no, back to you. Yes, yes. I, I'll respond not necessarily in any specific order, but yes. uh, to try and pick on them. Uh, first of all, I just want to mention uh, that some of the immediate steps to try and deal with the crisis is that the government has already waived duty on some of the food products that are coming in during this period that we are going through a crisis. Um, and uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, the records we have is that in this process of waiver, uh, the government has waived close to the equivalent of 10 billion Kenya shillings worth of food coming in. What is critical is that we have a record, uh, although I may not have it with me at this point in time, but we have a record of the people who have imported. And uh, my message to them is that we look forward 
for them to immediately pass the benefit of that duty waiver to the consumers, to the citizens. If they do not, uh, then it will mean that some other steps would have to be taken. So I want to make it very clear to all those who have been part of the program where duty waiver has been granted to make sure that they do not delay in passing over that benefit to the ordinary Mwanainchi. Mr. Speaker, uh, the issue of the debt crisis um, very soon, and I think there's a bill that is either before the House or it's about to come, where we want to adjust the law so that we can move away from a debt ceiling and to start talking about the anchor, debt anchor. So, Mr. Speaker, I would want to hold my horses here in the sense that during the debate of this particular aspect, the Treasury uh, Cabinet Secretary will speak more to the programs and the approach we want to have on this debt uh, menace that we are facing. But some of the things that we have outlined, which are not new because some of us have spoken to it before, is that we will have to continue working on the physical consolidation, looking at an enhanced revenue collection measures so that we are less dependent on external funding. Secondly, we are making it very clear that it is our, tent, our intention to focus more on concessional borrowing, where we are borrowing externally, and shy away uh, to the extent possible from commercial borrowing. This is particularly critical uh, as we, we move along. The other thing, Mr. Speaker, is that we have to cut back and focus on what are the real priorities. And you will recall that in the very early days of the President Ruto's government uh, taking up office, he did make a pronouncement that he was cutting back about 300 billion Kenya shillings of expenditure programs that were not regarded as priority expenditure. So this program of both physical consolidation, those that require enhanced revenue collection, and also refocusing on our priorities will continue uh, for as long as it takes. Mr. Speaker, I want to confirm that uh, the subsidy on fertilizers uh, will have to be with us a little longer. And indeed, I want to confirm that uh, this has been factored into the 2023-2024 budget uh, so that we can continue uh, to focus on production and productivity. Mr. Speaker, consumption subsidies this is where I would like us to say that we cannot, in all sincerity, sustain consumption subsidies. As a nation, we have to be honest to ourselves. And one of the areas that I can give you as an example is that when there was the, consumption, the subsidy on fuel, it was costing the government of Kenya which includes yourselves as taxpayers, about 16 to 20 billion shillings per month. 16 to 20 billion shillings per month on a subsidy on fuel that was impossible to sustain. So no matter who would be in the driving seat of government, it is not practical to sustain that kind of subsidy. However, even as the government removed the subsidy on, on petrol, uh, Mr. Speaker, we were alive to the fact that diesel, which is used in public transport, used by the farmers and other critical areas, 
There, we have maintained some measure of subsidy and also on kerosene because these are the ones that affect the ordinary man more than anything else. Mr. Speaker, uh, the fertilizer, when we talk of fertilizer, it is not just the planting fertilizer, but it also includes fertilizer for, that is the top dressing fertilizers that may be required in other areas. I also want to assure, I think the member of Wajir, that in, in my statement, I did mention that there are also livestock programs to support uh, the farmers, livestock or pastoralists who have lost, and I gave a figure of about 2.5 million uh, livestock, heads of cattle, goats, sheep combined. Uh, they have lost a lot of money uh, through the livestock during the drought period. And with our development partners, there are efforts to support them in restocking and also to support the offtake uh, as we go forward. So it is absolutely critical that uh, the efforts that come into this sector are holistic and not uh, directed at any, at, 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 and, uh, to the isolation or to the, at the expense of the livestock farmer. Um, now, let me see if I can pick up something else. Mr. Speaker, there's the question of what kind of time it will take to recover. I want to be very honest to this house and to the Kenyan people. And having had an opportunity to have served as a Minister for Finance before, in a moment of crisis, I want to state to the Kenyan people that we are in this for a long haul. The whole, the circumstances that we are in, cannot be wished away like instant coffee. And I've said this quite a number of times. We are going to have good focus on priorities and have them sustained consistently, religiously, and from a personal perspective, we need to be prepared to have about two years of challenges as Kenyans. But there is hope, because it is in that process of sustained good policies consistently being put in place, and we looking at them and working from a unified viewpoint as Kenyans, we shall be able to turn around the economy. Remember, I have highlighted the huge public debt I have highlighted the exogenous factors like the Ukraine war. We have, for instance, no capacity to determine when the Russia-Ukraine war will come to an end. It's beyond us. It will take a lot of international effort and the goodwill of the combatants to be able to deal with that. So we have to be realistic uh, as leaders uh, to the people who give us an opportunity to serve them, that it will take uh, a bit of time. And uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I want to say that no situation is permanent. No situation is permanent. Even the challenging times that we are going through now shall be overcome. They shall be overcome. And I want us to, to believe in that. Mr. Speaker, there are some questions that have been raised about the non-tariff barriers. I may not have an immediate answer, but I think it's a very valid point uh, raised. And uh, I think uh, I will take this up with uh, uh, our colleagues, my colleagues in uh, transport, uh, so that we can have a holistic uh, response to this uh, at, a, at a later date. Uh, but it is true that the non-tariff barriers are not just an obstacle uh, to international trade, but especially when they are in the arteries, but also an obstacle to our own trade uh, in, in, in the country. 
Um, I don't know whether there is anything else. I have in a sector. There was a question from one member on why you are not giving uh, simultaneously the subsidy on planting fertilizer and top dressing fertilizer. Uh, uh, yes, and, and seeds. And seeds. Yes. Mr. Speaker, I think I will take this up. As you take that also, there's an unrelated question from the Women Rep Mombasa mm -hmm. about Dongokundu compensations. Yes, I, I was going to come to that. Uh, can I make a commitment that uh, we will relay this particular concern uh, to the Ministry of Land so that uh, we can get a very accurate position on uh, this particular aspect of compensation? In, in, in Dongo Kundu. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I do agree that when we talk of production, uh, we need to support the farmer, uh, not just with the fertilizer, but on the fertilizer I've said there's both the planting fertilizer and there shall be top dressing uh, fertilizer. Um, on the issue of the seeds, uh, this is again a vital point, yes. and I think mm -hmm. I can only commit that in the package to the farmers, uh, the government will in also enhance support uh, on seed. I did mention in my statement that we did provide some seed for those that, uh, that, that uh, are in the drought-stricken areas. There was support of about 50 million in terms of seedlings uh, that the government has already uh, given out. So we will also see how that particular area can be enhanced. Thank you. We'll take another round. Uh, member for Kipkelion West, Hillary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the Cabinet Secretary, uh, Prime Cabinet Secretary, for a long response. But he has alluded that the public debt consumes a substantial portion of our budget and that the interest cost is the single largest expenditure item in our recurrent budget exceeding the wage bill and county equitable share of revenue. I want to ask if there are any attempts by this government to negotiate for the restructuring of these huge and expensive debts to give the economy some breathing space as we do other measures to revive locally. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. James Nikal. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, While well, appreciating the measures that the government has taken, uh, I would like to ask the Prime Minister questions on energy. Energy is probably one of the biggest drivers of costs of living. Uh, with power, I didn't get any information on how the government is intending to deal with independent power producers whose contracts, we are all aware, has caused very serious uh, impact on the cost of, of power. And fuel distribution also is a problem because what EPRA has done before, the fuel prices has only been the, the big importers and their pump price, leaving nothing for the resellers in, in the middle without any profit margin, and many have been driven out of business, leaving just the big uh, uh, importers uh, who are also selling, and most of them are foreign, creating a, a situation of a cartel behavior in the fuel uh, industry. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. A member for, I can't see clearly, the honorable member right in front of me. Who? Roku, you said you had no question. <laughs> no. Martin Wanyonyi, you might decide whether you want to ask a question or not. Martin Wanyonyi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my question today. Uh, private government secretary 
Can the Prime Minister tell uh, the country on how much deficit of maize is the country having and how much maize are they planning to import? And finally, uh, Mr. Speaker, what plans is the, is the government having to ensure that the maize that we are, planned, we are planning to harvest in the next three months is not affected, the, their prices are not affected by this imported maize in the country? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Makali Mulu. Yeah, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I really want to appreciate this presentation from the Prime Cabinet Secretary. It gives very good proposals on how to move this economy forward. Of interest are two issues. One is how to address the food deficit, the issue of the fertilizer. Honorable Speaker, we realize that this fertilizer is being given to all the farmers who register in whichever regions have been identified. The question I would want to ask the Prime Cabinet Secretary is, has anybody thought about improving the efficiency or optimization of the results by doing proper targeting so that rather than giving general uh, subsidy to every farmer, you target the farmers to benefit for purposes of optimizing the, the, the results? The other important issue is the issue of government to government issue, uh, Honorable Speaker, the issue of government to government arrangement. Honorable Speaker, this is a very good and a creative idea. But this idea normally serves issues of accountability and oversight. I would want to hear what measures are in place to ensure that even as we engage on this important strategy, we are assured of accountability and oversight by key institutions like Parliament. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Professor Barto. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate uh, the, the, the fact that uh, farmers were given subsidized fertilizer during the planting season, but my question is, um, the Prime Minister has rightly said they, they support the farmer all through from the planting season all the way. But unfortunately, the top tracing fertilizer currently is selling at 3,500, which is very high compared to previously when it was below 2,000. Are there plans to bring down that top tracing fertilizer to affordable price to the farmers? Because this is the time they are supposed to be top tracing and it is very crucial, but unfortunately, the fertilizer is very expensive. Thank you. Uh, ben Suda, what is out of order? Come, Kate. What is out of order, come, Kate? Mr. Speaker, I, I don't know whether you've heard, Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Lady um, refer to the Prime Cabinet Secretary as Prime Minister. And uh, even Professor Nikal uh, indeed referred to the Prime, Prime Cabinet Secretary as Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, do we have. The Prime Cabinet Secretary oh, here, no, or we have oh, a Prime oh, Minister? No, come, Kate. I would rather you preoccup get preoccupied <laughs> with substance than form. <laughs> ben Suda. <laughs> Give Ben Suda the mic. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. And I think we are discussing very fundamental issues. I want to appreciate what has been presented, okay. but Mr. Speaker, I also want to say, or state categorically, that the presentation appears too theoretical. I'm not seeing how it is going, the presentation, how it is going to practically address the Kenyan issues in the short term. Long term, we can wait to see and hope as has been put. But remember, Kenyans are suffering. So my first question is... Only one, so you don't have a first. Okay. But you allow the commas in between because they are subsequent to my question, Mr. Speaker. Yes. I want to ask on the demystification of the monetary policy because the Kenyans are watching us, asking questions, getting responses, clarifications. 
So could we have clear demystification of the monetary policy in practically addressing the economic situation and also ensuring that what mitigation approaches or strategies do we really have that are going to pull down the economic situation and ensure that food and fuel and any other subsidy is brought practically. Because what I'm, I've been presented for is not really convincing. We are still living in the future, Mr. Speaker, and yet if you would have at least a, a, a strategy that will cushion in the short term that we agree to elevate in the midterm and so be told what is it that is left for the long term. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Major Russell. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Uh, PCS, when you outlined your response, you say one of the problems is dollar supply. In uh, a recent committee visit to the U.S., our engagement with the diaspora, it came out that many Kenyans out there, they want to invest in this economy. And one of their investment is to put dollars into this economy. What is it that the government is doing to approach those Kenyans and without any much bureaucracy that will be able to have enough dollar supply from Kenyans out there? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Kakai Bissau. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. For the Prime Cabinet Secretary, thank you also for the quick overview and honest feedback to this House. But my question is, you talked about two years. We have to really fasten our belts, you know, uh, waiting for the hard times. But my question is, you mentioned about the ship having docked on the 13th of April. Now my question is, yes, G2G is a good initiative. But based on the LTAs, the master long-term agreements that have been signed, would you be specific on what is our expectation in the short term in terms of the liter of petrol, liter of diesel, and most importantly, kerosene, based on the ships that have docked? Because I'm sure there was some simulation, some numbers were cracked, and I'm sure there's something you've worked out to ensure that uh, we have specific in terms of cost. And finally, from the maize production area, with a target of 50 million bags, but we ended up with about 34 million bags. I would like you to reassure this House that for the recently received fertilizer, it's been tested and is going to ensure that it's a bumper harvest. Because I know in most cases we are talking about the weather, the rains, but I would also like you to reassure us that the fertilizer that we've received is actually going to ensure we have a bumper harvest. Thank you. The last on that batch, Mwengi Mutuse. Welcome Thank you, Mr. Mr. Speaker. Again. Briefly, I wanted to find out from the Cabinet Secretary, from the Prime Cabinet Secretary, whether indeed there are plans by the government to contract farmers in Zambia to plant maize on our behalf. And if there are those plans, why the same cannot be done with the lands that are idle under ADC, Kenya prisons, and also with local farmers. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Prime Cabinet Secretary, you can answer those 10. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, let me pick up a little bit on the issue of energy, because a number of members have raised uh, uh, concerns on the cost of energy. Mr. Speaker, in my statement I did say that uh, one of the things that we are pushing is to open up the energy sector for more players to come in so that we move away from having a club of a few players in this particular sector. And I gave the example, for instance, of the LPG uh, uh, gas so that we have more players coming in. Mr. Speaker, I know that uh, the government also set up a committee uh, to look into the various uh, IPPG um, agreements so that they can be rationalized. 
in accordance with the terms of those agreements and I think the Ministry of Energy uh, should be making some specific reports on this area in, in due course. Um, Mr. Speaker, we would want to encourage uh, all, uh, even the big, trade, big traders working alongside the small traders in this sector. So we are going to be strong on encouraging market uh, uh, free and competitive processes in this sector, save for a situation where we are going through this crisis. Now, Mr. Speaker, when we talk of energy, we also talk of electricity. And I have highlighted two key factors. One is that the exchange rate has taken a beating, the Kenya shilling has taken a beating, and this feeds in the cost of fuel, even in the cost of diesel, and ultimately, even in the cost of electricity. So these are factors that we have to take into account. Mr. Speaker, it is important to also know that we are diversifying as a nation. We are encouraging more and more uh, investment in the geothermal sector, uh, as an example, so that we stop relying on, um, on, on uh, just the, the, the rains. And at the same time, we rely less, that is hydro, we rely less sometimes on hydro because it takes very long to develop hydro, uh, but we are increasing our capacity and our potential in energy through a lot of investment in the geothermal area, in the solar area, in the wind area, and we hope that somewhere along uh, not too distant future, all these investments will come to bear and help us reduce the cost of doing business in this country, uh, including the cost of electricity, which is also critical in uh, production in uh, many areas. That the import program is being monitored so that it does not undermine the local farmers. This is something we are watching very, very closely uh, so that the projections that come from Ministry of Agriculture indicate to us uh, that if we are true to the program that uh, we have on imports and make sure that it ends, it ends before August, then when the harvest season sets in, the local farmer will not suffer. So this is something that we are monitoring very closely um, through the Ministry of Agriculture. Mr. Speaker, uh, if I may just highlight that when we look at uh, the imports of maize, as an example, uh, and I can have also, I'll also release this because it's on the table in the written statement that I've given, that you will notice that um, in 2023, uh, we may uh, have about 2.4 million bags of maize coming in, as an example, uh, and about 3.6 on wheat and rice, we could have about 4.8 million. All these cumulatively will come to about 10.9 uh, or 11 million bags of cereals. Uh, that are coming in around the staples. We also project to import this year close to uh, maybe 240 million uh, bags of, 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 of uh, beans as well. Mr. Speaker, this is a cycle um, and it's so important that when we engage in the uh, import program, you are looking at timely delivery of whatever is required and we, it should not coincide with uh, the local harvest. The targeted distribution, uh, Mr. Speaker, when all this food is being distributed, uh, we have a lot of good data 
through the Ministry of ASAL, as an example, and also Ministry of Agriculture, where they are able to map out very clearly which are the areas that require, are most needy. And uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, they've been doing quite well on this uh, in supporting the people who require uh, food in terms of support. And over 4 million Kenyans across the country, in different countries, counties, have benefited from interventions through government support, including uh, also support uh, from some of our development. So there is uh, some order in that, in that uh, process. Uh, I'll come back to the wheat issue. Um, as we said, Russia and Ukraine that are in uh, a state of war, the markets normally also respond that if a certain area uh, is not producing enough, uh, there are alternative markets for some of these commodities where um, we can source uh, the wheat from. Um, Mr. Speaker, um, the issue of monetary policy uh, and price stability, um, the stability and price stability, you have to have a, lot, a confluence of many different policies being tackled simultaneously to come up. For instance, uh, if inflationary prices are coming up, the central bank has adjusted uh, its rates to 9.5%. The idea is that the central bank wants to make sure that it is subduing the inflationary pressures, as an example. Uh, we, I also want to state, uh, without blinking, that we must know that there are mitigating factors which are short-term, and some of the mitigating factors is duty waiver on commodities that are essential. We have seen interventions like G2G on uh, the part of the government. Over and above that, there are issues like cash transfers to needy communities in our country where resources are being channeled to help them during this difficult time. But it would be a folly for me to stand here and tell Kenyans that you can have an outright instant solution to the recovery of the economy or turning it around. It would be a folly. Uh, and I remember, uh, Mr. Speaker, on a lighter note, although this is not exactly to answer the question, but I think it's important that I say it, that when I, was, when I served as Minister for Finance in 1992, one of the things that we had to do in order to trigger the economy and get it going again was to remove price controls. And at that time, uh, we were removing price controls in a very highly inflationary period. And a very well-seasoned elder and politician of this country, uh, the late Muse Jeremogi Ogingo Dinga, uh, at that time referred to my uh, programs as ill-advised policies. That was not a simple person speaking, but he said those were, it was an ill-advised policy. But Mr. Speaker, it was the kind of painful decisions that we had to take in order to start turning the economy around. So as we speak here, uh, we will have short-term mitigation factors like the duty waiver and so forth, but then we must also get out of duty waiver. 
because we cannot live with duty waiver forever. We also need the revenues. So it's an intervention that comes in for a short uh, space of time. And then after that, we have to e exit it and make sure that we are collecting uh, uh, what is supposed to be done. Uh, uh, um, uh, the Honourable Members have also raised an issue about uh, the resources that come from our diaspora and whether they, we can have instruments that can be uh, attractive to them so that they can invest. And I want to say that I know for sure that the Treasury uh, is working on this so that they can find ways of having vehicles that uh, can be to, to uh, there'll be some pronouncements uh, coming on this in this particular area. I do not want to preempt. I think they have to be well thought out so that uh, we, are sh we are sure uh, the Kenyans that in case they, they put their money in that place, it is safe, it is sound, and it will grow. Uh, that's, that is just what I can say. Mr. Speaker, I think I've Thank you. To... Let's take uh, honorable members. Those who want to ask questions on this, Yusuf's next question is very closely related to this. I'll still give you a chance, and I'll allow you to wander back to this as well. Yusuf, you may ask question 118. Order, Yusuf. Makali uh, Mulu, what's the problem? Yeah, I've just indicated. I know you asked the Prime yeah. Cabinet Secretary whether. I did ask two specific questions. I I do and I'm just paraphrasing it. Yes. You asked whether the G2G arrangement no, is yes. being sufficiently protected from abuse. Exactly. Yes. Right. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, let me try and uh, deal with that. You have a point. Whatever we do, must, we must be accountable. And one of the things we want to pursue, even as government, is that yes, sir. normally we talk of a whole of government approach, but we also want to talk about open government approach. And in the open government approach, we want to make sure that the framework that we enter into, we shall be open. And in my statement, I have indeed said that the, the agreements that have been signed have even given the examples of those agreements, and I am confident that through the Ministry of Energy, at an appropriate time, uh, further elaboration can be made on this. Thank you. Yusuf? Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my second question is number 118, uh, stroke uh, 2023. Could the uh, Prime Cabinet Secretary explain the steps the government is taking to ensure adequate relief food supply and its distribution uh, to the parts of the country severely affected by famine and drought? Thank you, Prime Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I wish to respond uh, as follows. Uh, first of all, let me state that uh, this is a program that uh, is uh, domiciled um, uh, in, within the Ministry of uh, the East African Community and the ASALs, uh, and they have been doing a good job, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, but for purposes of record, um, I just wish to highlight the following statistics. One, the current drought is ravaging many parts of the country and it has affected approximately 4.4 million people in the ASALs and a further 500,000 in nine non-traditional ASAL regions. And in my statement, I have again tabulated these counties that have been hit. Uh, there are 23 and an additional nine, which are on the borderline. They're not exactly ASAL, but they've been hit. Uh, I don't have to go through the, na the, the list because that will be available to, to, to the House. Uh, at the same time, Mr. Speaker, uh, 970 
thousand children, that is close to one million children, below the age of five, uh, five years, have also been affected and are being uh, supported. And we also have about 142,000 expectant and lactating mothers who have also gone through a very difficult time during this period. Um, and uh, we have lost clo more than 2.5 million livestock uh, in different counties. This season, we are beginning to see uh, some good rains. We hope that it will be it will last, um, so that uh, we can start the process of recovery. But the worst affected counties are actually Masabit, Garissa, Isiolo, Mandera, Tanariba, Samburu, Turkana, and Narok. And in these areas, people are also displaced. First, there was the drought, and then some flash floods. Uh, it has affected quite a number of these people. Now, in collaboration with our partners, uh, Mr. Speaker, since July 2022, uh, the government has spent more than 19 billion shillings to cushion lives and livelihoods of affected Kenyans. And uh, these interventions are in terms of relief food, hunger safety net program, water tracking, and livestock op offtake. Cumulatively, about 19 billion shillings. Mr. Speaker, I also want to acknowledge that county governments have complemented uh, the efforts of the national government. Uh, they have been supporting in all these areas that we are talking about, food assistance, livestock feeds and so forth, and tracking of water facilities. And indeed, uh, we need to acknowledge and commend the county governments for their role in also battling with the, the, the drought. Development partners that, that development partners, the UN agencies, NGOs, and other non-state actors have also plugged in approximately 48 billion shillings to support drought relief uh, across the counties that have been affected. Um, again, Mr. Speaker, uh, I will table the details rather than belaboring uh, the, the, the House by reading uh, one after the other, but the document will be available so that we share this information with members of parliament. Uh, there's also been the private sector, 163,000 food hampers worth 450 million to approximately 978,000 Kenyans. Under the initiative that is dubbed Wakenya to Lindane, initiative. Uh, other steps the government has taken to ensure relief supplies reach to as many people as possible include, as I said, collaboration with county governments and development partners to scale up relief and humanitarian responses to save lives, alleviate suffering, uh, in, and uh, bring uh, dignity to the affected parties. We want to enhance the coordination of this drought response efforts to ensure relief supplies reach as many people as possible in the last mile. We are also working to make sure that peace and security uh, support communities in the promote, promotion of peace and ensuring security. Uh, we are going to continue putting emphasis on uh, support for women empowerment uh, across the board uh, education for the youth and their empowerment. And then we have mitigation effects of climate change uh, across the country. And uh, there'll be tables attached to help. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, we can turn a lot of the effects of drought around if we can successfully uh, plant 15 billion trees over a 10-year period so that uh, we can start reversing uh, the impact of, uh, of uh, uh, climate change and uh, the drought that goes with it.
I think I'll stop there. Yusuf. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, I very much appreciate uh, uh, the Prime Cabinet Secretary's uh, uh, presentation, uh, giving us a picture of uh, uh, the distribution and uh, the assistance that the government is providing uh, to uh, communities that have been affected by uh, the drought and the, um, the famine. Uh, however, I note that Nairobi, um, with one of the largest population suffering from poverty, is completely left out of the relief distribution, food distribution. And as you know, Mr. Speaker, there are pockets of abject poverty and increasing hunger exacerbated by high unemployment uh, in our informal settlements in our capital city. These communities uh, that are affected by hunger have no any safety nets and often fall through the cracks. So uh, what measures is the government taking to ensure that these neglected and disadvantaged communities in neighborhoods such as mine in Kabukunji uh, are assisted and supported through this difficult period? Thank you, Yusuf Kamket. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, alongside getting farmers, could the, could the prime, prime, prime Cabinet Secretary and the government in general consider a, a grass planting or seed, seed grass uh, in order to, given the increase, increased uh, the certification in, in, some, in the places where some of us come from, in order to help. Um... Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I would like to maybe also follow up. I've, I commend uh, the efforts of government to uh, distribute the relief food, but I'm a firm believer of you know, teaching a man to fish. So my question is, what are the plans to maybe help Asal counties to move from being a consumer county to a producer county because we have big amounts of land, but there's little ongoing. Currently, we've just received the drought, uh, the, the rains, and floods are already carrying away our produce and our animals. There's little effort in terms of uh, having dams. There's little effort in terms of water harvesting. So it's not sustainable to continuously rely on drought because, I mean, on relief food because it not only benefits, uh, it doesn't benefit the masses, but only benefits the few. So my question is to ask what are the plans, because we don't want to be back here on the same issue. Thank you. Tandaza. Honorable Tandaza. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I take this opportunity to thank the Prime Cabinet Secretary for his elaborate um, answers on the various questions raised. Mine is about the depreciation of the Kenyan shilling against our neighboring countries. While uh, it is clear that the government-to-government -government, uh, initiatives with the fuel importation could ease the depreciation against the dollar, we are facing a serious challenge with our neighboring countries like Tanzania, which I border, whereby a time like this last year, the, the Kenyan shilling was exchanging at 23, 23 Tanzanian shillings were exchanging at one Kenyan shillings, and now it has gone down to 15 Kenyan shillings. And we rely on cross-border business for the hustlers, for the law people down there. What is the government doing to cushion the depreciation of the Kenyan shilling against our neighbors? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Carole Omondi. Thank you very much, uh, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, it, has, it seems to me that a lot of uh, decisions made by the previous administration in terms of loan procurement for infra infrastructure development and other initiatives are the cause of the current uh, crisis. And it would seem that a lot of these decisions were made not for the public good but it seems for private gain, uh, what in common parlance we call the state capture. I would like to know from the Prime Cabinet Secretary how 
the administration, current administration, is planning to unwind transactions that have created very serious negative impacts in the economy, whether at the level of exchange rate, the levels of interest rates, or the level of uh, inflation. Whether they are going to do a serious economic inquiry to try and unwind the negative effects of state capture in our economy as a long-term structural adjustment program. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Majority Leader. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, as the Prime Cabinet Secretary, I'd say the, we have experienced the worst drought in almost 40 years and the lowest harvest of maize in the last 10 years. Honorable Speaker, as much as we appreciate what the Prime Cabinet Secretary has said in his statement, that there are what he has called non-traditional ASAL counties, including Kiambu County, that has benefited from relief food, the, at least during this drought season. Honorable Speaker, I would want to hear from the Prime Cabinet Secretary what government is doing, uh, because other than the non-traditional ASAL counties, there are also urban areas like Nairobi and other major urban uh, centers where slum dwellers also because of the effects of drought and the high cost of living are not able to access food. What measures government is taking to at least ensure that these relief efforts also reach the uh, people in slum areas. And now, Speaker, maybe in an unrelated matter, if the Prime Cabinet Secretary could also appraise the nation on what government is doing to check the proliferation of gangs uh, and I know this may be more to interior but this afternoon we have witnessed uh, the former president lead a gang of goons to take over an office and you know honorable speaker in the region where I come from Mungiki has been a huge menace to the people of the central Kenya and when we see Mungiki uh, thriving and rising again, we get concerned, Prime Cabinet Secretary, more so when we see elements associated with Mungiki being led by a former president. It becomes a matter of national concern, and I would beg your indulgence that the Prime Cabinet Secretary also takes this occasion to address that particular issue. Lillian Kogo. Use the next one. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. In light of the explanations that have been given uh, by the Prime Cabinet uh, Secretary on diverse issues that have contributed to um, high cost of living in terms of uh, uh, basic commodities that we need as Kenyans to live, among other things, uh, he said that um, we have um, exchequer delays and then we have pending bills. He put up forward a number of uh, things that have led to this. And pending bills come as a result of uh, not honoring uh, processes that have been procured in the right manner. But as it were, Honorable uh, speaker, we still continue to see exchequer delays, Honorable Speaker. So I would want to find out uh, from the Prime Cabinet Secretary, when are we going to have a cessation of exchequer delays? When are we going to have disbursement of funds? Like as it were, even the basic money that we require as members of Parliament, the NGCDF, there are delays from the exchequer. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Kombe. Harrison Kombe. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for this opportunity. Mr. Speaker, before I ask my question. There are no preliminaries to questions. Just ask your question. It's That's not... the opportunity I've given you. Okay, Mr. Speaker, when the demand is high and the supply is low, the prices definitely go up. What plans 
does the government have to provide farmers in this country with boreholes fitted with solar panels to facilitate irrigation activities in asal areas such as Magarin constituents, Ganze, Kilifi, and other parts of the country. Thank you. Thank you. Omboko Milemba. Where's the mic? Now, Honorable Speaker, uh, two things happened last uh, in, the, in the 12th Parliament. 2019th October, we increased the debt ceiling to 9 trillion. But two months, to be exact, on 8th Wednesday, June of 2022, we increased the debt ceiling to 10 trillion. And uh, the mover of that motion, who was Honorable Kimunya, did indicate that the specific reason for that increment was to make sure that the new government that will come to office settles down. Today, as uh, well put by the, uh, the Prime Minister, allow me to use that word, they only have fiscal space of borrowing of about $5 billion. Does it mean that therefore we were not exposed to correct understanding that the physical space for borrowing will be almost to a level of one trillion. And furthermore, Honorable Speaker, one question. this is very interesting, Honorable Speaker, that the interest rates which are consuming the highest recurrent expenditure charged on CFS, 70% of it is from internal borrowing. What is the government doing, the Prime Cabinet Secretary doing, from an economic point of view, to make sure that that local borrowing is managed? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Dagoretti South, KJ. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I would like to thank his earthquakeness, the Prime CS. Uh, for quite some elaborate answers this afternoon and also in the same breath thank the honorable member for Kamkunji for the questions. M Mr. Speaker, if what the Prime CS is telling us is applied and executed well, I think the short-term needs shall be well satisfied. But the people of Dagoretti South and the people of Kenya are keen to know through this opportunity that the Prime CS has to address the nation through Parliament to know what are the long-term plans, because it is the short-term planning that got us into the mess that we are in. What are the long-term plans for us as a country to be able to move away from rain-fed agriculture so that we are able to reduce the instances of such shortages? What are the plans to reduce the over-dependence on maize and rice as stable foods, and also what are the plans on returning to organic, traditional, regional appropriate and farming resistant crops? And finally, Too how... Too many questions, only one. And, and the storage, uh, Mr. Speaker, because if we don't apply the Joseph of the Bible principle, when we are in the, in the, in the instances of glut, we shall always suffer these instances. So what are the plans on storage when we have the excesses in food production. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Speaker. You. Member for the member at the back, you are not on the screen. Member for Kabondo Kaspul or Kaspul Kabondo? Kaspul. Kaspul. Yes. Right. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, I want to uh, first appreciate the answer which the Prime Secretary has given in reference to the relief food distribution. My question is, what economical value does it have? By giving an example, two weeks back, uh, the relief food was distributed in my constituency in Kasipol with a combination of all the entire security in the Homer Bay coming to the constituency and all political rejects led by 
the cabinet secretary for ICT, the, with the two choppers coming all, all around to the same constituency. Order, member for so Kasipul, my question Order, member for Kasipul, you will not use question time to besmirch others. As far as I can take judicial notice, the minister called Owalo was not a candidate in any contest in the last elections. So it's unkind to call him a reject when he never presented himself for any choice. And it's good to be courteous to even those people you don't like. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you for your correction. Actually, you are right. Him is not a political reject, but the team. But the question is, what does economic value it brings when the relief food is brought and each person just get a half kg of rice with the entire team with the two choppers moving around? What economic value does it has in reference to food distribution? Prime Cabinet Secretary, you may answer those. We'll do a final round after this. So hold your horses. Uh -huh. um, Mr. Speaker, let me pick up the issue of uh, what do we do uh, so that we just don't rely on rain-fed agriculture. Mr. Speaker, uh, I want to state that uh, one of the key planks of the Kenya Kwanzaa government is to intensify investment in dams, in ponds, uh, and in also water harvesting. Uh, only a few uh, weeks ago, if I give an example, in Kwale, uh, Magarini area, uh, the president, and I was there, was launching the Mwache Dam. Uh, the Mwache Dam is an investment uh, where supported by the World Bank, um, and the Kenya government. In total, it will cost about 18 billion shillings, and that dam will provide a lot of support and relief uh, in sections of the coast. Over and above this, um, the government has, is making efforts to have dams uh, in many other parts of the country, and uh, recently, uh, in collaboration with uh, the Italian government, for instance, uh, there is now great hope that the Itara Dam will be revived, and I think the Aror Dam will also come up. We also know that uh, the, not too long ago, when uh, the president was in uh, Egypt for the COP, 27, he had a conversation with uh, the British Prime Minister, uh, Sunak, and I think there is a proposal uh, that w things going well and all being equal, um, there could be a major investment in the Grand Falls Dam in uh, Tana River, uh, which would go a long way uh, in alleviating uh, the challenges of drought um, and flooding uh, in that region, that region. So I've just given a few examples, but under the Ministry of Water and Irrigation, there are very many programs to support uh, this, because it is clear that you cannot continue to rely on uh, uh, rain-fed uh, agriculture. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I just want to reiterate that the impact of the shilling, we peg our shilling to the dollar most of the time, um, and uh, I did acknowledge uh, in my remarks that uh, the shilling has taken a beating and I gave the factors uh, that led to that depreciation but efforts are now being put in place to stabilize uh, for example the G2G uh, program which will ease pressure uh, in, the, in the short term on, 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 on uh, the shilling I've also indicated that um, the, uh, the next few weeks or months, uh, we could also benefit from some inflows of, uh, of, of uh, uh, support uh, from these development partners 
um, and this will go a long way in also helping to to, to deal with the, uh, the, the depreciating uh, shilling against other other currencies. Mr. Speaker, um, the issue of the urban areas, Nairobi and other urban areas, it is true that uh, the investment programs that uh, the government must undertake going into the future must focus uh, on the urban because it is projected that about uh, by maybe 20, as much as 60 to 70 percent of our population living in the urban areas. So clearly the focus and policies must be such that this uh, new dynamic uh, is taken seriously. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, the cash transfers that have been going on uh, have also been helping uh, those who are needy within urban centers. It has not been exclusive to rural areas. The safety nets, uh, the school feeding programs, um, uh, they've been also covering uh, some sections of, of, of uh, our urban areas. Mr. Speaker, uh, I want to, to state that uh, uh, the proposal made about looking at seed grass, uh, I think it's a welcome suggestion uh, which uh, our specialists can pursue further, particularly in support of uh, the pastoralists uh, in, 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 uh, in our country. So we take it in, in good stride and it's something that we shall get our experts to pursue a little more and see how that can be, uh, can be strengthened. Um, the exchequer delays uh, are things we want to deal with. Um, and to be able to deal with all these exchequer delays is it's going to take what we'd call enhanced revenue enforcement uh, so that we can collect uh, more resources uh, that are supposed to be paid. Uh, we have to expand the, 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 the tax base so that we are bringing in uh, more people uh, to be able to pay the tax. Uh, we also have to intensify the alter alter alternative dispute resolution uh, uh, mechanisms. And, and I can tell you that uh, so far uh, this has been yielding very good uh, results uh, where uh, billions of shillings that have been locked in disputes are now being unlocked by Kenya Revenue Authority. So we see this as a, as a way of improving uh, uh, um, the issue of, of uh, cash at hand. But I want to state to, to the Kenyan people that we are going this route because our physical leg, leg room is so limited. There's very little space as somebody pointed out, that our debts are mega. And therefore, we have to really intensify and improve on the other areas so that we don't just go continue on a borrowing spree. This is absolutely uh, critical. Um, uh, and and uh, I, I want to state here that uh, we also acknowledge that there has been a delay, not just in... Uh, in, in uh, uh, some of the funds that support parliamentary activity, but even we have had a delay in disbursements to the county government. Uh, and this is something we want to address. Uh, I've had a conversation, and the President has had a conversation uh, with the Treasury to see how we can smoothen this process uh, so that going forward uh, we can uh, distance ourselves from these delays. Um, including the delays we saw in salary uh, payments last time. These are challenges. Uh, and and uh, I, I would like Kenyans to appreciate that uh, this, this, these are not overnight occurrences. Uh, we are going through uh, what uh, was a cumulative effect cumulative effect of consistent omissions and commissions 
over a very long period of time that has put us here. And uh, without uh, really apportioning Berlin, because now we are the ones who are elected, and it is our duty to, to get us out of the hole, um, uh, we, we, we also have to say that uh, uh, along the way, accountability uh, will have to come to play. Accountability will come into play. Um, Mr. Mr. Speaker, uh, somebody would like to make it look like uh, maybe the, 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 the administration of Honorable Ruto is on an administration, uh, on a revenge mission. But uh, the fact of the matter is that we cannot stop the reports of the Auditor General. They are going to come to this house. And those reports, knowing how the Auditor General Office operates, those reports are going to be very accurate and they'll pinpoint. And the house, 